¿Crees en los exorcismos? ¿Crees que el alma también puede ser atormentada por seres demoníacos? Hace poco se estrenó en cines la película El exorcista del Papa, basada en los archivos reales del padre Gabriel Amort, fallecido en 2016 y quien fuera el exorcista principal del Vaticano. La película está protagonizada por Russell Crowe y podemos platicar un poquito con él para preguntarle, obviamente, cuál es su postura respecto a todo este mundo de lo sobrenatural. Vean lo que nos comentó. Well, I haven't ever seen like a ghost floating around like a white sheet, you know. Um, like I haven't ever seen a spectral image, but I've definitely been in places where there was some kind of energy imbalance. I've been in houses where They were very uncomfortable. Um, wow. I've had premonition experiences with things that are going to happen or communication about relatives or with relatives that may or may not still be here. Um, wow. And I think, you know, you talk to most people and they'll have these sort of experiences, just little experiences that, you know, coincidences or what have you that are inexplicable. You know, I mean, I arrived home one night on this shoot and uh, the front door of the place I was staying in in Dublin and there was a dead bird sitting in front of the front door and that is one of the thematics in the movie, you know. So you can look at that, you can sort of take that on board in a way that you allow yourself to be scared by it or you can look at it in different ways. Now... I chose to think there must be some wild creature who wanted to be my friend living around and he'd brought me a present. So, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, I definitely think, you know, as we were discussing that uh, evil exists and I, and I definitely think that um, you can, you know, do things in your own life to keep yourself away from that. El actor además nos compartió lo interesante que le parece el padre Gabriel Amort en la vida real. Well, I found him fascinating. That's the reason that I got involved in the in the project because he as an individual in his real life was just a very very compelling character. When you follow through his story and what he experienced and you know who he was as a 17-year-old when he he first believed he got a calling, but you know then being, you know, refused admission Uh, as a priest because they didn't think that he knew enough and he was experienced enough. So he goes back wow. to his hometown of Modena. It's 1942. You know, there's a, a war on. He, you know, joins the resistance, becomes a partisan and fights against the fascists. You know, he has a gun in his hand. He shoots to kill. He comes out of that experience, goes to law school, becomes a lawyer. After finishing law school, becomes a journalist. And then he goes back to Rome and says, I still have this calling. I want to be a priest. And then they say, fantastic, because now you've learned stuff. Now you know things. Now you can be a teacher. You know what other people are going through because you have some life experience, you know. You know? And then when he's like around 60, to get tapped on the shoulder and taken to this other job. You know, he was he was the one individual chosen by his predecessor to take over that job. He had no connection to exorcisms at that time. You know, it was just the belief of the man who chose him that he was the right person for the job. And then he ends up being the chief exorcist for the Vatican for 36 years. Tens and tens of thousands of, of exorcisms. Can you imagine what his life would be like dealing with afflicted people all the time and the darkness of their souls and the darkness of their experience, for him to be able to continuously reach out to help people. I mean, it speaks volumes of who he was as a man. ¿Y tú ya viste El Exorcista del Papa? Cuéntanos qué te pareció esta película en los comentarios y nos vemos la próxima. Moros, negros, moros, negritas, moros, negros, 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 moros, negros